Hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of our travel vlog with Milan Holidays. Welcome to Armenia. Now the first part of this video was uploaded a couple of days back and it was to Georgia. If you haven't watched that video, please do watch it because I have explained more about the travel needs, cleared some doubts regarding traveling with Vizier Abu Dhabi, then uh, the documentation needed and more information on traveling to Georgia and of course exploring the beautiful country Georgia. Now this video starts from the day we checked out from our hotel in Georgia and started our journey to Armenia. We went by road. All our travel requirements and arrangements were made by Milan Holidays, our trusted travel partner. So everything went smoothly, starting from getting a UAE transit visa as we flew in Vizier Abu Dhabi to Kutaisi. Now to talk a little bit about Milan holidays, I'm sure you must have heard about them if you have been watching my travel vlogs for some time now. We have been using their service and they do it perfectly. They conduct group trips as well as personal trips. They do within India as well as international trips. Indians who have residence visa in the Middle East get on arrival visas both in Georgia and Armenia. Or else, I guess, if you're coming from India or any other country, you will have to get an e-visa. Anyway, we were given information by Milan staff about what documents to carry at the border, the delay it will take there, and many more. They arranged a taxi to travel from Georgia to Armenia. Now, if you're arranging it by yourself, you need to be careful because uh, there are certain documents needed for the driver also, I guess. This is why it's always better to choose the service of a trusted travel agent who can get it all done clean and clear. And our driver was Georgian and he didn't uh, speak English, but it wasn't needed though. Uh, it was okay. Uh, there will be two borders, of course. The Georgian border will be the first one as we are getting out from Georgia. It just, uh, it took just five to 10 minutes there. Now, one reminder, if you are a family or a group of uh, three or four members, do not go to the immigration counter in a group. They prefer one by one. I have seen some families being screamed at by the police. Unless you have a baby or toddler who needs help, try going one by one to the counter. Uh, then after a few minutes drive, you reach the Armenian border. It's very close. And at the immigration counter, you will get a form that's, uh, that has to be filled out. We are a family of four, so we had four forms to be uh, uh, filled. Nothing hard, just the details of your passport, the purpose of your visit and such. The procedure is simple, but um, it takes some time. There is a little bit delay over there, even if there is no rush at the counter. So that's all about the procedure of all that. Uh, now, this is a four hours journey from Tbilisi to Yerevan and an hour and a half or maybe at the border. So it takes almost a total of five to five and a half hours to drive to reach Yerevan from Tbilisi. So to get a break in between and not to get tired from the long journey, Milan had booked a night stay at a beautiful location. It's a glamping accommodation. Uh, we reached there by 8 uh, p.m. On the way, we ordered our dinner so that it was ready by the time we reached. I have seen this type of accommodation in videos and pictures, but never experienced. But as it was night time, the time we reached, couldn't get a good view of the exterior, didn't know what's outside. But the tent or whatever this is called was amazingly set. There is a toilet, uh, there's a bathroom, come toilet over that side. On top, there's another bed for two. I prefer to sleep down and kids always wanted to climb up. 
uh, there is a screen that's rolled up and can be pulled down whenever you want to watch something that is a tv uh, that there'll be a projector internet was available there was a small kitchen space and overall it was excellent the climate was freezing there so they turned on the heater and lit a fire to keep us warm and that's our food we ordered two potato pancakes with stuffed chicken and i wanted something veg so chose buckwheat with mushroom this buckwheat dish tasted like almost like upma felt good having it even the potato pancakes were delicious Does this look familiar to anyone? It was such a creative way of using the sewing machine table. They placed a thick wooden block to convert it to a table. It looked really pretty. That was a beautiful view outside the next morning. It was cold. I remember it was 2 degrees in the morning. Here you get breakfast from 10 to 11 and I need something to eat in the morning or my stomach gets upset. I am a very much morning person who needs food on time. If my breakfast is late or skipped due to some reason, my whole day goes bad. So I ate this leftover pancake that I had packed the previous night into our room. It's anyway cold, so the food was also cold. It didn't go bad, but I had to eat it because otherwise my day will be not going in a good way. Here, breakfast is from 10 to 11, so you only have one hour. So what we did was we packed our bags and kept them ready. Now we didn't go straight to Yerevan. Had some spots to visit on the way. Armenia is a very beautiful country. Right from the beginning till our return, we felt the same. The landscapes, the villages, and even the people are very lovely. 
Our first spot on the way was Old Diligent City. And this place is commonly referred to as Armenian Switzerland or Little Switzerland by the locals. And yes, I have been to Switzerland and to some of the European countries. Armenia does have a European vibe. Maybe I guess it's a landscape and the nature. It was really beautiful. Then we went to Lake Pars and it was so stunning to see the lake, the ducks and the swans swimming, very beautiful. Now there's restaurants, paddle boats, rope course, zip line around the lake. So there are few activities that you can do and you have a restaurant there. It's a good, calm, peaceful place to just relax. On the way, we all were very hungry and wanted to have something filling and satisfying. Now, Western Armenian food is more like Turkish and Lebanonian food. So you get to see more kebabs and similar to Arabic cuisine. The sweets found there were almost like baklava then tulumba and many more Arabic sweets. But there were slight variations in the filling. They used more of the walnuts than the pistachios because I have seen here in the Middle East, they use a lot of pistachios for the filling of the baklava. Their famous bread is lavash, which is similar to Romali roti. Uh, has a slight change in the taste too. This is prepared in a traditional oven. We had visited this small place where two elderly ladies were preparing and selling lavash and a few other items. And I've heard that elderly people there are very hard working, especially women in Armenia and they do some of the other work to earn rather than sitting simply at home in their retirement time. We did try a few other cuisines from Armenia and I must say almost all the restaurants and cafes in Armenia have a really good ambience. One day we had gone to a Mexican restaurant and the interior was beautifully decorated. 
the staff wore Mexican outfits. Even we get to try on and take a few pictures. Unlike in Georgia, for breakfast at the hotel in Yerevan, where we had uh, stayed for I think two or three days, had the same buckwheat, and sometimes they served a dish with lentils, and it tasted almost like thick dal. So it was satisfying to our taste buds. We wanted to try some Indian food as we were missing it again, so we went to an Indian restaurant and had some delicious food. We forgot to buy church kela from Georgia. That's a traditional sweet candle-shaped candy made out of different flavors. But luckily we saw it in Armenia and gave it a try. It tasted good. The main ingredients of Churchkela are grape must, nuts and flour. So that's all about the food we had from Armenia. Now to some amazing attractions we visited. Now Armenia is a landlocked country. Lake Sevan has the only beaches in Armenia and it is the largest water body there. The most important source of fresh water and freshwater fish is this place. On the same day of visiting Sevan Lake, we went to this ropeway activity at Zagadzir and it was outstanding. Very lovely to sit, relax and enjoy the beautiful view. I've heard that this location is even more beautiful during snow time, which I guess is in January and February. You get to experience more with mini activities like skiing and playing around with the snow. Okay. Are they in some Even during the fall season, the view is mind blowing. We were there after fall and before the snow. Whatever, the country is beautiful, I guess, at any time of the year. Night walk through the lively streets of a country is something we, or at least I, enjoy. The temple of Garni is situated in a very strategic location. It's on a cliff overlooking a range of the Gegama mountains as well as the Azad river near the Ararat plain. 
The temple was dedicated to God Meher, the Armenian pagan god of light and the sun. It was built in the 1st century AD by King Tiridates. The staircase of the temple has 930 cm high steps, so you will need an extra push to climb those. There was an earthquake in 1679 that destroyed the temple. Then it took the archaeologists more than 20 years to put the pieces together. The reconstruction was completed by 1975, almost 300 years after it was destroyed in that earthquake. The temple was entirely rebuilt using original stones and the missing pieces were replaced by blank stones to make them easily recognizable. In the same location as Ghani is another stunning spot, the Stone Symphony or the Symphony of Stones. Now you can go to the exact spot by walking or you pay a few pence and they take you on their train. This is a natural monument. It's made up of huge symmetrical hexagonal and pentagonal basalt columns, almost 50 meters high which appear to be handcrafted due to this extraordinary symmetry. These wonderful rocks were formed under high pressure conditions due to the cooling and crystallization of volcanic lava. The genocide that happened in Armenia is sometimes called the first genocide of the 20th century. The construction of the monument began in 1966. Twelve slabs are positioned in a circle representing the twelve lost provinces. In the center of the circle, at a depth of 1.5 meters, there is an eternal flame dedicated to the 1.5 million people killed during the Armenian genocide. There is an alley of trees planted by foreign dignitaries in memory of the people who died in the genocide. Visit to the Blue Mosque and the Statue of Mother of Armenia were a couple of other visits during our last days in Armenia. So that's all for my travel video this time. Had a wonderful trip and it happened because we had such a good service from Milan Holidays who always keep their clients happy. I will share their details on the screen as well as in the description box. If you are planning for your next trip and want to have a smooth journey without any chaos, I would highly recommend using their service because they do it professionally and perfectly. See you all with another video. Take care. Bye-bye.